very excited about this next keynote. It's a topic, again, that we've been talking about all week and uh, have a tremendous keynoter here to uh, fill you in on it. So uh, without further ado, here's the uh, Vice President for Conversational AI, Vice President of Engineering for Conversational AI at Google Cloud, Beishad Bezadi. Uh, my name is Beshat. I am uh, engineering lead for conversational AI at Google Cloud. And uh, very excited to actually talk about how AI and generative AI is going to change and what we're offering for contact centers and, uh, and uh, the uh, exciting uh, uh, changes which are happening. So uh, first of all, I will try to touch on conversational AI and uh, how is customer experience and conversational AI changing in this period of time. And uh, of course, you know, over the past 10 years, across domains, many different domains, we have been seeing that uh, revolutions that have been happening, you know, breakthroughs, and really superhuman level of AI has been reaching out uh, in, uh, cert in many different areas. And uh, things which was not possible are possible. You know, just to give an example, the protein folding works, which has been done by AlphaFold team, has really made such a breakthrough in, in biology and drug discovery and so on. So, so now the question is that all these um, uh, changes which has been happening, what about conversational AI? Have we also reached that superhuman level uh, and breakthroughs? And uh, I want to just explain it in this talk that, yes, it's actually happening now. So uh, in order to talk about conversational AI, I'm dividing it to three pieces. First, multimodal sensing. This is about you know, speech recognition, vision. Second is intelligence. This is about you know, uh, thinking, understanding, and uh, generative capabilities, which uh, these days you should all be familiar with. So uh, let's get started. First of all, multimodal um, uh, sensing and interacting. First, we start from left, speech recognition. Um, over the past couple of years, there has been several big breakthroughs on speech recognition. In my opinion, the biggest one happened just a couple of weeks back, where we announced a universal speech model. This is the best existing state-of-the-art speech model, uh, which is targeting to move towards recognizing 1,000 different languages. Now it's a couple of hundreds, and it's reaching accuracy, which is higher and unseen before. Uh, on English, we're reaching 98% uh, uh, accuracy for speech recognition. And on long-tail languages, still we're seeing you know, significant uh, percentage higher than any model that we have had before. Uh, this is, just for comparison, 40% better than uh, other models that we are aware of uh, in the industry. So we're super excited about speech recognition effort, which has been going on at Google. Second, I want to talk about text-to-speech. This, uh, this is about generation of a speech. So the, the objective here is that how human-like this has been. So we'll start this by a game. I play two audios, and I will ask you to try to guess which one is the human and which one is the generated voice. So please listen carefully. Um, this is the first one. She earned a doctorate in sociology at Columbia University. OK, remember it. And now the second one. She earned a doctorate in sociology at Columbia University. So can you raise your hand, please, if you think the first one was the bot? OK. Uh, now, can you raise your hand if you think the second one was the bot? I don't see very well. Yes? So the, the second one was actually the bot. So the point is here is that it's actually getting very, very hard. Even engineers in our speech to te uh, in our text-to-speech team are not able to uh, differentiate which one is human, which one is not. And that is really um, uh, making it very, very natural uh, to, and human-like types of speech. And when you... Um, um, uh, there, is, there is not only you know, how human-like it is, there is also emotions which are coming into the picture. For example, you could you know, play these, uh, these uh, uh, text-to-speech in a casual way. Your account balance is um, $92.50. Or when it's necessary in a more lively manner. The Pixel 6 is a great upgrade. You can get it for only $90 per month. And of course, in certain moments, you need to be more apologetic. Unfortunately, we can't give you any more discounts. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a useful one. So um, also, um, 
Also, you know, it's becoming easier than ever to generate these, uh, these text-to-speech uh, uh, models. You know, you can really go from seconds to minutes and generate, you know, uh, re re generate a voice which sounds like you. And this talks not only in your, uh, in, your, um, um, uh, in your voice, in your language, but also it talks the same voice across different languages. So this is a way to show off to your friends that you can talk different languages. Here is what one of our engineers in our team did. Hi, I'm James from the Google Cloud TTS team. I created this voice with just a few minutes of audio. Ahora puedo hablar cualquier idioma que quiera como español, francés o alemán. ¿Cómo suena en portugués? So you can see that he generated the voice and actually it's in English, Spanish and Portuguese just right away. So third is the vision, and of course we have been investing for the past several years on Google Lens uh, for understanding images, understanding what's in the picture, and trying to search it, trying to act on uh, and, uh, upon it. And, uh, and with Vision AI and Google Cloud, we're also trying to bring uh, this technology um, to, uh, to the enterprises. Now, let's go to the second pillar, which was intelligence. In the past, I mean, just until recently, uh, we have been, when we talk about intelligence, we talk about intent recognition. We talked about you know, grammar, following rules and grammars. Uh, that has changed. Today, when we talk about intelligence, you know, these models can explain a joke. Explaining a joke is not just you know, understanding words. It's really going one level, uh, one level deeper and trying to understand the, the connections. Why is this joke funny? In the middle here, you're seeing some examples on top, which is about problem solving. You give a problem, and a step by step, it explains how it's solving these problems. The lower, the, sorry, the lower example in the middle is, uh, is showing um, a, an example of w where we are trying to trick our models. Hey, if you, have, if you need with one car, it takes this much time. If you have two cars, will it be faster? Uh, how much time do we need? And of course, the models understand, and it doesn't get tricked in this case. The last one, React, is a new innovation from our research team called Reason and Act. And it's basically trying to solve the problem in a more recursive uh, way. You see a problem statement, you try to take some actions. You take some actions, and then you look into the results of that uh, uh, actions that you did and decide how to continue. So you recursively try and iterate that until you can solve that problem. It's a little bit like how we solve problems human. You give a give statement, you go to a Google search, and then based on the results of that Google search, you might want to do another Google search and so on. So that's really the level of problem solving that our models are reaching. And that doesn't mean that they solve easy problems, like some of the ones which was uh, uh, possible for us to solve uh, in the, um, uh, um, uh, for, uh, for possible for humans to solve easily. But they can solve, actually, you know, world-class programming competition questions, like the description, which is on the right-hand side here, and, uh, and solve, you know, and generate, you know, the output uh, as, you know, a world-class program, um, uh, programmer would do. So really, you know, we're very impressed by these results. Now, generative capabilities. This is a third uh, pillar. Um, we have all seen you know, examples of image generations. Super cool. You know, this is our uh, state of art uh, image generations with Google. Example here, a panda racing a motorcycle. And you generate you know, uh, a, an exa the uh, uh, example, you know, <laughs> different versions of that image. Now, um, this is applied in all different types of modalities. For example, you can play a few seconds of an audio and ask the model to continue this audio for you. you can, it can be a speech, it can be an audio, it can be a music. So let's see an example of that. Nay, nay, lording, answered Wolf. We know not how to call you lord or lady. We have lived too long in the forest and are now Exciting. <laughs> um, so now, uh, of course, these models and foundational models, which are having these generative capabilities, are covering different modalities. Um, it's you know, image, video, music, audio, dialogue, text, code, and more is coming. So uh, these are really making the possibilities of solving problems to the next level. And um, Across conversational AI, you know, the enterprise, of course, has you know, all these use cases which, uh, 
for many years, we have been you know, trying to work and solve these problems. But now, really, you know, the tools and the technology is getting significantly and closer than ever, time, ever in the before to solve these problems, uh, whether it's you know, an in-car assistant or a virtual digital assistant, contact centers, of course, and, you know, and so on. Um, these large language models are bringing important capabilities to the picture. They are making it to feel like human. They are uh, problem solvers, as we saw. They can solve problems. They are low efforts, and we don't need as much effort as before to make you know, these uh, conversational experiences. And they are generative. But there is a but here. They are not usable as they are for enterprise. There is many, many factors that if we want to have use LLMs in enterprise, we have to take into consideration. You, of course, have to take, think about data privacy and compliance of these bots. You, of course, want them to be safe. Toxicity could you know, ruin a brand just by one or a couple of examples that might you know, get out. So you want it to be safe. You want it to be connected to the backends and systems that you have so it's integrated and you can have transactions. You want it to be in a way that it, you can improve it and you know, over time fix the problems if there was a problem. And you want this to be grounded in your data so that it doesn't hallucinate and it doesn't make up answers, but really gives answers which is related to the enterprise. It has to follow your business logic. It can't decide a new business logic for a problem. And it has to, of course, be cost friendly uh, when we want to put it in enterprise setup. And, uh, and of course, you need to be, uh, it has to be understandable. You need to be able to test it and debug it. All of these are what we have been very busy with over the past several months uh, through our Google Cloud Generative AI offering. And we have been very happy, we are very happy, to say that our solutions are covering all of these aspects. And we have been announcing our Google Cloud Generative AI a couple of weeks back, and, uh, which was covering you know, these three main uh, levels of, uh, of, um, uh, of offerings, basically. First of all, on the lower side, you see Vertex AI. This is our end-to-end -end ML platform, which we are uh, upgrading it to become a large language model platform so that you can access to these large language models, whether it's through an API to connect it to your pro uh, applications or websites, or through the Generative AI Studio, which is about you know, trying to actually creatively make use cases there. In the middle, you see the Gen AI App Builder uh, pillar, which is uh, covering three different pieces foundational models that we talked about, enterprise search, which is a search which is basically connecting a Google search-like system to your documents or private documents or your enterprise repository and get that, uh, that level of answers and accuracy from, uh, from, uh, from, from answers part of, point, of point of view. And then, of course, a conversational AI layer, which is helping the conversations, connecting, making those transactions, and so on. So um, uh, these three together often are necessary to make applications for enterprise. It's not you know, one or two of these which can, can be enough. And of course, for, for our solutions, such as CCAI and Document AI, we're operating everywhere uh, uh, thanks to Generative AI also, which I'll be talking about that. Let's see an example of how the customer uh, uh, experience is becoming with these Generative AI offerings.
siren was too high, so I might play again the music. So, <laughs> um, so let's talk about contact centers now. So what does all of this mean for contact centers? Um, in short, we're trying to bring you know, generative AI across all of the pillars of, con uh, of CCAI. So on virtual agents and bot building, we're making it 10 times easier, faster to build bots. You can actually make you know, information and answer seeking questions right out of the box. You know. uh, transactional and business, higher level business logic can be defined thanks to natural language even, much easier. I will show some of that. Agent assist, we're having using the same tech that we use in, uh, in, um, in for the virtual agents and agent assist side so that there is this smart chatbot, voicebot, which is in parallel shadowing you and you can ask it questions and it can proactively help you with, uh, with uh, information. They're all using large language models and the latest of large language models. And insights, also the same. It's uh, trying to uh, you know, really close the loop, uh, trying to uh, identify questions and topics and you know, areas that you wanted to be added to the virtual agents uh, uh, or agent assist behavior. Of course, all of that you know, integrated in the best possible way to contact center AI platform so that out of the box, you have these solutions uh, without any extra integrations to be available for, uh, for, for use. Now, let's uh, go through uh, this in a, bit more of the, in a bit more details. Bot building, faster and easier than ever. Um, again, there is a several, several different reasons for that. One is about answering, which you just connect to your content and repository. Uh, the, uh, of the, the, uh, to, you just give the content, and the chatbot out of the box is capable of answering questions which the answers are there. Secondly, we have a series of pre-built flows, also using large language models, which are very robust for the blocks that they are solving, and they can be just drag and drop and be used. Uh, you can define a very high-level business logic to, uh, to, uh, uh, for, for, uh, to just follow the, uh, to, so that the chatbot follows that, and you can define that even with, with uh, natural language. Um, this is how it roughly works. I'll try to go quickly on a, you know, a series of you know, um, uh, screenshots of the tool so that you can see that. So you basically uh, select your conversational bots that you want to add you know, the public the documents or private documents uh, or you know, product catalogs or sources that you want the chatbot to be able to answer from. And then you upload those, you select those, and press on Create. The data is, of course, uh, stored on your uh, company's private protected uh, environment. And just in minutes, you have a custom multi-turn uh, conversational bot that can answer complex questions about that purpose. It's that simple, nothing else. Now, um, you also have controls uh, that you can decide what level of generative AI nests or generativeness AI you want to uh, add to your, uh, to, uh, to your uh, chatbot. This could be very restrictive or more open. Again, it's about you know, really giving control for what makes sense for different use cases. And, uh, and it's, uh, you know, with a couple of clicks, again, have this you know, integrated with popular messaging apps or telephony providers or live agents for agent assist use cases. Insights is, again, completing the loop by providing you know, a feedback loop and providing where, where the chatbots and agent assist needs to invest more. Um, and this is happening automatically. So with all large language models, we look into conversations, identify questions in the human-to-human -human conversations, that uh, uh, clusters of questions, and generate, auto-generate answers for them. And these auto-generated questions and answers get added, again, to the agent assist and, uh, and the virtual agents. Also, we will uh, identify automatically with uh, the, the areas uh, uh, that could be added to their behavior. For example, in this case, check balance or open account. And just by exporting them to the builder, you will have these components coming to the, uh, your, your graph, your business logic graph. And some of this is actually because we have pre-built components. Some of these will have pre-built components out of the box. For example, you could just, you know, by a couple of clicks here, add one of these pre-built components to, to your flow. And uh, when you want to define the business logic with you know, simple UI, this is very different than how we were doing it before, because we just do it at a very high level business logic graph. Similar to the fact that when a human is hired to work on a, a, in a contact center, you don't teach common sense and English to that human. You just tell to that human, here is roughly the rules that you need to follow. We're doing it that way, the same way. Either with, uh, either with defining a business logic graph, as you see on this slide, 
or even closer to what we do with human by just natural language describing uh, um, uh, what, you know, what, what the bot should be doing in different cases. So use English to teach and build bots. And by the way, these bots will not only talk English. Out of the box, these bots are talking all languages. So that's the magic. And um, you, can, you can deploy these bots, the same tech also in, uh, live for, to, to help live agents and you know, to make them, of course, more productive as agent assistants. So you can either, the agent can either ask them questions during the call or they have also proactive suggestions because they will be observing what, uh, what situation the person is at and trying to uh, bring these uh, proactive suggestions, which again, with just a click, you can copy these answers to the flow and you know, start to have uh, uh, answer thanks, to, uh, thanks to, these, uh, um, uh, to the generated answers. And of course, summarization, you know, in the middle of the call, at the end of the call, it can always, you know, when it needs to get uh, transferred with uh, to the other place or, um, um, or the post call. We have been having um, some, uh, some of these, of course, like summarization already for several months and uh, with, with happy customers. And, uh, well, but, but we're also upgrading that with our large, large best uh, uh, LLMs uh, in, in, uh, uh, at home, uh, in-house. In and uh, and um, um, so, so this is, we are seeing that we're reaching a level where it's, uh, it's beating human, uh, human uh, level of uh, writing this summary. So these summaries uh, are written better than humans. Now, let's see that when all of this you know, tech, we are using it for and combining it with some of the things I said before, like a super hyper-human-like conversations and uh, you know, image recognition also you know, for multimodal experiences, what types of experiences we have been building uh, with. Uh, here, there is a car assistant demo. A person calls a car assistant. The car assistant is a bot. It sounds human, but it's a bot. Hello. Welcome to your virtual car assistant. How can I help? Hi. I'm calling from the corner of Baltimore and Baker Street. My car is making a strange noise the last 10 minutes, and just now a warning light appeared on my dashboard. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you able to show me? I'm sending you a link that allows you to share a picture of the dashboard. Let me look into it. Unfortunately, it seems like your engine needs service and you need to see a mechanic. Would you like to schedule a mobile service today at 1 p.m.? Mm, can they also come later at 3 p.m.? Okay, your appointment is booked for 3 p.m. today. Can I have your license plate number? Yeah. It's CYK. Mm -hmm. 3236. Got it. And just to make sure, the number is CYK3236, correct? Yes. Thank you. And please don't use the vehicle in the meantime, as it may not be safe. <laughs> so, if an experience like this, I mean, many aspects of this was not possible before, but before building something close to this from some aspect was taking months. This experiment can be built in days. So that's the, uh, uh, what we're super excited about. So now, um, let's talk, of course, you know, we are uh, working with uh, many of our partners and uh, customers on trying to make these conversational AI and gen AI capabilities to be you know, available to them. And, uh, uh, co-innovate with them, helping them to innovate. So, uh, and uh, uh, super happy to talk to many of you uh, when you're interested to talk about this. Um, now, let me talk about um, uh, uh, CCI platform, of course. You know, um, the capabilities that I showed, all the capabilities that I showed are, of course, available through APIs to all of Contact Center Solution and CCAS partners. However, when we believe that the best experience is really you know, achieved at the full value when there is a super tight integration. And uh, this is for, you know, to get the out of the box and with the best uh, UI possible for these experiences. This is exactly why we launched CCI Platform last year, you know, by connecting UJIT award-winning uh, CCAS experience and Google's leading AI solutions. We're super excited about how the past year have been going. 
with CCI platform um, at Google, uh, we're offering uh, really the overall uh, uh, contact center AI offerings, ranging from telephony to IVR to agent desktop to CRM connectivity, reporting, and of course, AI itself. Um, now, uh, over the past year, our focus has been really about making CCAI solutions to be the best possible way and, and in the deepest possible way integrated to the CCI platform so that on day one, without any extra integration, you can uh, get benefit of these, um, these solutions. And, um, Having you know, uh, metadata from across the stack, we're also working on other AI solutions to improve uh, you know, things such as call routing, QEM, and the overall, the overall automation and control. And um, there are additions that we are, there are um, new additions that we are adding to CCI platform. The most recent one, and which we are very excited about, is the native out of box intelligent workforce management. So. <laughs> So CCIP workforce management offer highly accurate forecasting, scheduling, and real-time adherence monitoring to improve uh, contact center agent performance, uh, satisfaction, and the overall customer experience. Moreover, similar to other places, we're following our principles of out-of-the-box value, real-time intelligence, and best-in-class user and uh, agent experience. This is why we feel that we reinvented uh, Workforce management, uh, not as a separate add-on, but we really integrated this to the uh, platform itself. So it doesn't require any imports or any duplication of data. And the user interface is very modern, intuitive, and accessible. Super happy about that. And um, we have been, since the launch of um, uh, Contact Center's few months back, Contact Center AI platform a few months back, having uh, several customers that have been deploying this. and. Uh, we're super happy to see that in, from the get-go, really days after deployment, we are seeing significant uh, uh, numbers moving in the right direction, things that you know, our, our, our customers caring about. So um, uh, very um, excited to see uh, these changes in this uh, way. Now, let me talk also about the bigger picture of everything else which is happening at Google uh, about uh, around contact centers, the one Google ecosystem. And of course, you know, Contact Center AI platform is really perfectly sitting in the middle of uh, everything else that Google ecosystem is powering. But Google is, you know, we're powering from silicon to cloud, um, you know, uh, cloud AI, device, OS, browser, productivity suite, and, uh, and uh, to basically help really with day to day everything which is needed for having exceptional customer experiences and agent and employee productivity. And of course, uh, doing that with, you know, um, uh, the best possible security. Um, so let me talk about two of these. One is Chrome OS. So you might be wondering why Chrome OS and laptops and desktop are in uh, our contact center strategy. So contact center is one of the key strategic pillars of Chrome enterprise solutions. And uh, we believe Chrome OS is the best computing platform on the planet to run your contact center on. And uh, there has been, it's not only that what we believe it, in it, but um, the IDC report is, uh, uh, has been showing that the agents are getting you know, significantly more productive when they use Chrome OS. Uh, managers are benefiting from uh, easy onboarding and rapid redeployment, uh, which is uh, helping in this uh, uh, situation of uh, high turnover uh, contact centers. And they can monitor the operation and the health of the devices in remote and hybrid uh, environments. And uh, perhaps um, uh, most importantly, Chrome OS is uh, keeping your, um, your sensitive business and data uh, and customer data uh, more secure than any other platform uh, on the planet. There is no known ransomware attacks on Chrome OS. And um, to finish uh, my examples, um, Google Workspace, uh, which is the world's uh, most popular productivity um, uh, suite. Uh, with th more than 3 billion users, and there are 9 million uh, paying customers for uh, Google Workspace. Uh, the wor Google Workspace is, you know, of course, being used by organizations to you know, help and transform their employees, you know, uh, how they collaborate with each other, how they connect, how they create um, uh, 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 content and value. And in this era of AI and generative AI, our workspace team is also very actively working on uh, integrating these, the best of generative AI in the most responsible and safest way into these tools also. And I want to show a video of what's coming there.
So uh, that's about it. So uh, first of all, just a couple of quick points to <laughs> close. Um, Gen AI App Builder is, uh, has been you know, announced a couple of weeks back. It's in private preview with trusted uh, testers. Please contact us if you are, want to try that. Today, we did announce and we are opening uh, the, uh, uh, the contact center Gen AI offerings, which I just showed, the bot buildings and so on. For, for also our trusted testers and private preview, please come to our booth if you want to talk about that. And of course, if you want to talk about anything else, conversational AI, contact center AI platform, uh, also you know where to find us. I have been working on conversational AI for the past 10 plus years at Google, and uh, there has been no time which has been as exciting as these days to work on this field. Thank you. OK, great. Uh, we've got one more keynote. Uh, we'll take a short break until about 11.35. Then we'll be, be back in here to close out the morning and the keynotes for Enterprise Connect 2023 with Amazon Web Services. Thanks. <laughs>